Okay, we're back here live at the Velocity Conference in Santa Clara, California. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm here with Courtney Nash, editor from O'Reilly Media. This is your ecosystem, this is your community. Yes, this what is my tribe. Welcome back to theCUBE. Now you're, this you. is your show. Yeah. We talked at Fluent, but this is your deal. Yes, <laughs> it's, uh, I think John Oswald said it's like doing your wedding over again. <laughs> I can't get more than 10 feet at a time. It's, uh, it's speaking, been a great week. Weddings are like that. It's like, you, all the stuff's going wrong, but people don't notice yeah. the little things, but you do. But what's, what, what's your take of a lot? Because you know, we were coming in here, Dave and I were trying to package up a good story, because it's a hard story to tell because it really is on the cutting edge of the modern infrastructure. You got some DevOps on one hand, you got performance and automation, yep. chef puppet in the middle, you got UI, UX design, and performance in between. It's everything. Yeah, well what, I'm going to throw that back to you. What do you think of this compared to Fluent? Um, well, my first reaction was it's a browser conference because a lot of people think about the browser as the front end. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's got mobile. Yep. It's got big data analytics with performance, management, automation, and DevOps. So my first one was, I, go, I, can go to, I can go to DevOps, I can make it a browser conference, and a mobile conference, and a design conference all wrapped in one. That's the way I see this right now, and the people that are here, the alpha geeks, are the ones really designing that integrated system. So you know, I think to me what this is, is the consumerization trend. Interesting. Like the consumerization of IT and the enterprise side is full force. Yeah. And early, right? People are investing and trying to figure that out. The web scale companies are trying to take performance to a whole nother level. They've done DevOps, they've been there, done that. They've yeah. done the SSDs, they've done that stuff. So there's, that's good. And then you ratchet up the other side, which is what's the edge container? Mobile, browser. So I think it's, it's hard to describe, but it's really relevant. <laughs> it is hard to describe. Did I do a good job? How yeah, did I was, do? That was pretty okay. good, that was pretty good. <laughs> I think the thing that I was the most surprised by at the conference this year you come every year to try to figure out sort of what's, you, know, you might find what's the bleeding edge, like what are the different things, and, and the thing that was really interesting to me this year was this focus on perception, and I don't know if you and Steve talked about this, mm -hmm. but uh, one of my favorite talks uh, from the entire conference was Rachel Myers and Emily Nakashima, uh, they used to be uh, both of them at ModCloth, Rachel's at, uh, at GitHub now, and the, in terms of performance in the front end, sort of the page load, right? Time for your page to load used to be the holy grail of, of performance, right? So people would be sitting there trying to load something. How long does it take for the whole page to load? And it's now much more about perception, right? Versus the actual course, you know, how long does the entire thing take to load? If you can actually give people the perception of speed, that's almost more valuable than speed itself, raw, true speed. So I thought that was one of the most interesting themes that was emerging out of the conference um, this this year, or here in, in California, obviously we have another one coming up in New York, we'll get that <laughs> plug in. And, and so now people are starting to talk about like feature load time, or how can you get just above the fold stuff to be painted. Um, so that was a really interesting bleeding edge sort of trend as far as I'm concerned. We definitely heard that. I would definitely agree with you. That was one of the most important highlights. I think the other thing that I would add to that is that we heard on theCUBE specifically was this notion of designing the trade-offs together, right? So it's not just siloed, mm -hmm. UX, UI yes. guys and gals. And then the, on, the, on the infrastructure side, the DevOps world, they want to do a good job. They want to serve developers. So the, the trade-offs on the design side was a very big message. Yeah, and the design trade-off is really interesting to me because you know, when you talk, people initially started talking about DevOps is between being you know, operations and dev, but I think what's happening is that the pain points are moving all the way up the stack and the things you need to understand about performance, you can no longer just you know, put it off on the system people or only say, you know, and, and front end, developers and, and even designers now are starting to have to deal with the kinds of things that systems engineers yeah. used to have to deal with, right? So now you're trying, to, you're trying to build a page and you have to start worrying about like the GPU and you have to start worrying about physics when people didn't used to have to worry about yeah, that yeah, as much yeah, on the front yeah. end. So, 3D modeling, we yeah. had um, you know, the folks in here talking about 3D, 3D in the browser, that's yes. there. What about mobile? You yeah. know, augmented reality, these are the new, it's interesting, it's, what did you think about the, um, the piece about the big data? Because there's a little bit of big data in here. I know you got Strata Conference, not your show, but you know, it's O'Reilly's got a big show in Strata, but there's some big data in here. Well, I, I mean, Strata and Velocity, I think, are initially starting to, are, are, you see the overlap the most when it comes to performance and data, right? Um, and, and I didn't actually get to go to the talk uh, that Ilya gave about mapping that on top of the HTTP archive, but that does sound you know, pretty fascinating in terms of giving people more access to data. 
Um, so, especially with mo with mobile, and you look at things like, what do you mean by data now, right? So yeah. some of the biggest challenges to mobile are things like images and, and video. And, and I think that is a new way, if you think about those as pieces of data that you're having to deliver, very big pieces of data, um, then I think things start to get really interesting. The other interesting thing I would, I would share with you, and I want to get your take on this, because this was not teased out very well, on, on, other than our CUBE interview. Um, Kate Matz did a, a talk on PopForms, her new leadership thing. Yeah. So the human aspect, we always, we always talk about that at O'Reilly. Ed Dunbill on the day, big data side, always talks about the human aspect of yeah. it. Here more than ever, you're talking about the human aspect. She's got this leadership angle. I thought that was very interesting. What's your take on that? I know Cultivate is something you guys are looking at. Um, could you share your perspective on how you're looking at that? Because when you have this transformative environment that is integrated and the value chains of companies are changing, yeah. how they deploy and use technology is going to change job functions. It's going to create new opportunities and change. Right, so there's two things I, I catch myself saying a lot. One is that I say that every technology problem is a people problem. And now every company is a technology company. So every, you know, I don't know how your math is, but basically now every company has people problems. But that's not new. Yeah. Um, but I, I think some of, some of the things, Velocity's just always been a place where we've talked a lot about culture and change and how technology plays a role in that. Um, I think that we talked a little bit about this at Fluent and we saw it again in the keynote today and, and, and uh, Jonathan from Twitter is giving a really great talk on this today about failure and, and how do you handle failure. And in the end, we like to, to not talk about failure, but failure has such a, it, it always comes down to a human, a human component. Um, and you can try to design your systems to be as high performant and as bulletproof as you want, but if you really have to deal with these kinds of human people problems and where, those, where are those intersections between, between humans and technology, and that's often where you start to see those failure points happen, and failure is a big topic for us in, in the performance world. What's right? interesting too, I want to share with you, is that it was a real diversity to the audience, and, uh, and the audience, the, the participants in theCUBE. We had content delivery networks, we had Akamai and Edgecast on, yep. we had, um, we had um, AT&T Mobility on, basically saying, hey, you know, we always get the brunt of the bad news. If the battery drains early, it's AT&T's fault. Yeah. Right, so like, yeah. they're working on making apps better, so they're, you know, looking at optimization. So you got, a, you know, AT&T, and a variety of other, other companies that, that all have an interest. So it is the thread of the fabric of this world is, is the stack. Yeah. And the stack is changing. You're seeing um, functionality, the tooling moving up the stack. Right. On the app side. It's not just app server optimization, web server optimization. That's a hard thing to get your mind around. And, and, and so, I thought you guys did a good job there. How are you looking at that category of app development in particular? Uh, <laughs> well, I was just talking to somebody else about, about how nobody can see what's in the stack anymore, right? Like, you, it, it, this is a part of a problem when you talk about failures. You, you don't even understand what's going on under, no, nobody can understand well enough like what goes on under, under the hood. And one of the other, I'd say right now, sort of sub-themes that I started seeing coming out of Velocity uh, this week is less is more, especially when it comes to, to app development in a weird way, right? Like sort of focus on the, we talk a lot in this, in this industry about minimal, minimum viable product, but I think everybody looks out there and they goes, I want to be Twitter, you know, I'm going to scale to a billion users, and, and the reality is, is most people see all this technology and all these tools that they have available, and when you think about app development, you really need to start, be good yeah. at being small. Yeah, small scale is, becomes, large scale came from small scale, at one yeah. point. Yeah, <laughs> and so I'm starting to see some interesting things about that. I mean, um, I think the, one of the last talks today um, is, uh, is, is about you know, enough with the JavaScript. Like we, We've had this boom right, in JavaScript yeah, yeah. in our industry and, and, it, and it gives us so much flexibility, but it's added a lot of pain to the process as well, a lot of bloat or whatever you want to call it. Um, so when I look at the app development world and, and especially in mobile and, and in performance, I, I'm very much seeing this, this sort of return to Start small, be more simple, focus on the, yeah. the smallest things you can do for your users. And that's a user experience philosophy as well, if you think about it. It's like, you know, fast track on what the goal is. Right, but it and ties into performance yeah, in yeah. the long run. I mean, and if you start building this complex sort of whole yeah, yeah. system geared towards Twitter and you're not building that app, then you're actually letting your, goal, your performance goals get in the way of you. Yeah, it's so funny. I went to the big shows this year, EMC World, you know, the vendor shows, and they're saying, they're trying to talk to the IT guys. You don't have to be Facebook to get the benefits of Facebook or Google. In other words, web scale, right? Yeah. That's the hyperscale market, right? Yeah. But it, Facebook started out in a dorm. Yeah. 
mean, it was small scale. MySQL servers on the cloud. So small scale, I think that's a really important point. Small scale becomes large scale. Eventually. If you, if you do it properly. So yeah. um, my final question for you is, what do you think about the live sketching? She was because amazing. The, I thought that was fantastic. That was the highlight of the show. Yes. I was on Twitter and I'm like, What's live sketching? Is that a new protocol? Is that like <laughs> yeah, a, it's a new a UI tool. thing? New tooling. Like, it's just this no, amazing. Did you guys? Did you get her in the booth? No, I wanted to get her. I mean, look, I've been watching her uh, sketches. I said, we want to get those images for the cube. We can put them up on our site. It would be really. great if you guys can get some of those up. That yeah. was something I've never seen at a conference who, before. Who, it was who did that? What's, who was that person? Do you know the person? Who um, did that? I, I don't. I feel terrible because I didn't. I don't know her name offhand, but I hope you guys could find it and and put that up. Natalia. She, yeah, th that was just amazing. She was good. So yes. shout out to live sketching. Um, we're a big fan here in theCUBE. Obviously great stuff and certainly uh, hot on Twitter and trending on Twitter on the show. Um, so we got a couple minutes, we have one minute left. I want to okay. get your perspective on going forward. Obviously, good show. It is kind of like a wedding. I would say congratulations, it was a very big success. Uh, thank you. Um, a lot of geeks, still developer centric. Yes. Okay? We see some big companies here, some IT kicking the tires, the progressive IT guys, the big names, not just developers. Yes. So you can see it exploding a little bit out. Yeah, it's still, it's still a conference for developers with that in mind, for, for people in the trenches and operations. Um, and I saw, I mean, it had a vibrancy this year that I hadn't actually felt um, as much in, in previous years. I really was excited by the conference. And you know, the DevOps is a hot topic in IT right now, in enterprises, so that's, you got that going. They call it private cloud, or we want to call it. So it's got a little cloud flair to it. What's New York going to be like? Can you, can you share with us some of the data that you're thinking about? what you guys are looking at on the landscape for the, for the ecosystem, for velocities? Well, I mean, New York's going to be really interesting, um, again, from maybe from that intersection with Strata and big data, but we're obviously going to see, I think, a big focus on finance and media uh, going on on the East Coast, uh, which seems like you know, sort of a no-brainer, but I think that that's going to push the boundaries of performance and, and data and where those two things start to cross over. And you run into some really icky privacy stuff in there and security stuff too that I don't think we deal with as much with some of the more, you know, some of the more startup focused and smaller scale, you know, those types of companies that we see at, uh, at Velocity in California. So I'm looking to see what that, where that tips a little bit. Okay, Courtney Nash here inside theCUBE giving us a taste of what's to come and kind of looking at what happened here. Velocity Conference is a major force that brings together what I'm calling the modern infrastructure, the modern application environment, the modern, modern developer environment, where you got to understand what's going on in the other parts, a holistic view of, of accelerating change in performance. Uh, congratulations on, on all your hard work. We'll be right back after this short break here inside theCUBE after this uh, short break. <laughs>